Hey guys, what's up? Levi here with Food Fight VFX, and I'm bringing you another very quick tutorial today on more planar tracking. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking this uh, video here that I got from Pexels.com, and if you guys want to follow along with the tutorial, I've gone ahead and linked this video uh, off Pexels, so you guys can go ahead and download this for free and follow along with the exact footage I'm using. But what we've done is we've essentially added this image here uh, to this portrait. If I go ahead and shut off that portrait, you guys can see the original here is just a blank uh, portrait here, a blank frame that she's holding. And so that's what we're going to be starting with. And by the time we're finished, we're going to have tracked in this beautiful image or any image of your liking into the portrait uh, for us to essentially complete the shot. So with that all being said, let's go ahead. We'll go to our project panel. We'll take our footage and we'll drop it onto a new comp icon and that will create a new composition for us to begin working. Now, the cool thing about this feature is we're gonna be using a built-in plugin for After Effects called Mocha AE. Now, this is by the uh, team over at Forest FX and what they've done is created a free version called Mocha AE of their Mocha platform. There is a pro version, but we're gonna be using the free version today that comes installed with After Effects. So with our footage selected, we'll go to Effect, we'll go to Forest FX Mocha, and we'll choose Mocha AE. And then from our effects panel, we'll go ahead and click on the Mocha logo here, and that will launch the user interface for Mocha AE. Now that we're inside Mocha AE, we're gonna find a frame to start doing our track from. Now, in the center of our footage, she kind of pushes the portrait towards the camera, and it's also very straight and, uh, directly facing the camera. It's not at an angle or anything like that. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna start from a frame somewhere here in the center. But you can also feel free or feel welcome to start here at the beginning or at the end. It doesn't exactly matter. We just want a frame that everything's in nice focus with. Uh, once we've got our frame selected, we're gonna go ahead here and choose our X spline layer tool button. And we'll zoom in with our scroll wheel. And we're just going to go around the uh, inside edge here and we're just going to click and create four points with our left mouse button. And once we've done that, we'll use our right mouse button to close the spline. And then we're gonna go ahead and click and drag with our left mouse to select all four points. And clicking and dragging on one of these blue handles allows us to essentially tighten the corners up to make a nice, perfect square. The next thing we're gonna do is go down to the motion settings and where you see translation, scale, rotation, shear, and perspective, we're gonna make sure that we have all five of those selected. And under minimum pixels used, we'll crank that up to about 90% or so. And what minimum pixels used is essentially is we've drawn our spline around the thing that we wanna track. We're saying that, hey, listen, the minimum amount of pixels that we want to stay consistent from frame to frame needs to be higher. We want it to be closer to uh, being identical from frame to frame uh, as opposed to less. And so we want it to essentially uh, have a more strict track, so to speak. The next thing I'll do is I'll turn on our grid here. This is our show grid button, our show planar grid. And this is going to allow us to kind of watch the track as it's going through to make sure that everything is hunky-dory. So with everything selected and chosen and all the settings created, we're gonna go ahead here and click this track forward button and go ahead and track from our center frame all the way to the very end. And depending on how strong of uh, hardware you have in your computer, this can take a little bit more or a little bit less time, but you just gotta let it do its thing. Uh, and let it track all the way to the very end. So we're gonna go ahead and just stop talking. We'll let that track to the very uh, end, and then we'll go back to the middle and we'll track back to the very front. Okay, so that is tracked from our center frame all the way to the very end. So now we'll go back to our keyframe here and we'll track backwards doing exactly the same before except this time we're tracking back to the very first frame of the shot. Okay, that is tracked back to the very first frame. So if I go ahead and use my scroll wheel on the mouse to zoom out and we can click and drag and move our playhead through here, you guys can see with that grid enabled that we've got a very solid track of that surface. 
So that's looking mighty good. So what we'll do is we'll shut the grid off by clicking on the show grid button again. We'll zoom in here and we'll go ahead and click on the show planar surface button, which is directly next to the show planar grid button. And that is going to bring up our planar surface. Now, if I re-enable the grid and then move any of the corners of this planar surface, you'll see that the grid also changes. So this is a great way for us to figure out the perspective of a surface that we are trying to track. So if I kind of move those to the corners of our portrait, you guys can see that the grid kind of realigns itself and looks nice. But what we want to do essentially is zoom in here and we want to put the corner of our planar tool right into the corner of our portrait. And uh, a fancy way of making sure that that is uh, saying a little bit more accurately is if we come up here to this button right here, the show zoom window, right up here in the top left of our window, when we click and drag, it's gonna go ahead and create like a little window with a magnifying view of what we're doing. And so this is going to allow us to get a more accurate uh, positioning of our corners. And what this planar surface essentially is, is it represents the corners of our track. So when we go ahead and apply the tracking data to the uh, to, to the painting image that we're gonna be placing here, what it does essentially is it snaps the corners. It represents where the corners of our track are. So that looks good. We've got our track on there. The grid is still tracked and aligned very well. The last thing I want to do here is where it says layer one, I'll just double click and we'll rename this portrait track. We don't necessarily need to rename it, but in many instances, you guys are going to be tracking more than one surface on more than one uh, area of your footage. And so it's always good habit to name each of your tracks. And once the track is named and we've got the corners of our planar surface uh, fixed to the corners of our portrait, we can go ahead and close Mocha and click Save. So now what we got to do is in the effects controls panel with our footage here, we're going to drop the tracking data drop down here and we'll click create tracking data and we'll choose portrait track, which is what we just renamed that track to. And watch what happens here over the portrait or over the footage when I select OK. It goes ahead and it creates corner pin information. So this is going to be our top left corner, our top right, our bottom left, our bottom right, and then of course our center. And what we're going to do is for the export option, we're going to choose corner pin support motion blur because this is a moving surface. We want to make sure that whatever image we apply uh, supports motion blur so that it doesn't look too sharp when there's movement, especially along the edges and corners of our track. Uh, the next thing we got to do is choose a layer to export that tracking data to. Now, currently, we only have our footage in here. We don't want to apply it to the footage. What we want to do is we want to bring in an image and apply it to that. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring in this image. This is just something I found on Google. So what you guys are going to do is just go on Google, type in uh, painting and find a nice picture that uh, you guys want to use. We'll right click on the picture. We'll go to transform and we'll fit it to the comp. It's very important that the photo is the same size as our footage before we apply the tracking data. In fact, we're gonna to need to pre-compose it as well because what we need to do is we need to stretch the edges of the painting so that they go all the way to the edge and we get rid of that light blue area to the edges of our, our photo. Then we'll right click, we'll hit pre-compose, we'll name this portrait image. We'll make sure that we selected move all attributes and choose okay. And that creates a composition that's the same size that contains our image. And then we'll go back to our footage, go to the effects controls window, and under layer export two, we'll choose portrait image. Watch what happens when I click apply export. It automatically goes and corner pins that portrait to where the corner pins of our planar surface was. In fact, if I click on the portrait image and I select the U key, You'll see here we have our upper left, upper right, lower left, lower right, our position, our scale, and our rotation. Every single frame is keyframed for all of those values. And if we scrub through uh, back and forth in time, you guys will see that that image adheres perfectly to the portrait itself. The last thing that I wanna do 
is if I shut off the portrait image, you guys will see here that there's a shadow along the edge and obviously there's a, a texture to the surface here. So we're gonna choose a blending mode that uh, you know, kind of brings some of that background information back in. I already know that hard light is gonna be a good choice here for this instance. It shows that shadow through the edge and as we scroll forward and backwards, uh, the lighting and shadowing of the uh, portrait itself are all preserved. But you guys can go through and choose a blending mode if you're liking, or you guys can just leave it on the normal blending mode. But in the end, this is what you're left with, a perfect track, new content put onto the portrait here uh, with our actress, and everything looks perfect. It was a excellent piece of footage to use uh, to show for an example. As I mentioned at the beginning of this tutorial, what you guys can do is if you go to the, uh, the description of the, our tutorial video here today, there will be a link directly to download this stock footage. And then, like I said, if you go to Google and just type in portrait or image, uh, you know, like painting, uh, you guys can find uh, an image to use uh, if you guys want to follow along with this tutorial. But that's it, guys. It's super simple. You open Mocha AE, you track the corners, you set the planar surface, you guys then apply that tracking data to an image that's in a pre comp that's the same size as your footage, and boom, you guys have got a solid track here just like we got today. So if you guys enjoyed this tutorial, if you found it useful, uh, if, you, if you guys can start thinking of like other creative ways of using this technique in other uh, examples, other scenarios, other pieces of footage, uh, then, then please feel free to do so. Send me a link to your results. I'd really love to see it. I'll make sure to comment on it. If you guys have any questions or if you run into any problems while following along with the tutorial, leave a comment, let me know. And as always, if you guys found this tutorial useful, please subscribe to my channel uh, so that you're updated and notified whenever we come out with new tutorials. Uh, we are pumping out tutorials quite often right now, and so it's definitely something that you guys will want to subscribe to. And it's the best way to support what I do. Uh, that all being said, this is Levi once again with Psych VFX. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.